What up, everybody? This is Bobby with PlayingWithPizza.com. Today, we're doing an internet experiment, something I saw on the internet. A dude was making a batch of pizza dough with a five-pound bag of all-purpose flour. Here we go. We're starting off with 52 ounces of water or 1,474 grams or 1.47 kilograms, however you want it. All right. So anyway, I saw this dude making this five-pound uh, batch of dough. Well, it's going to be more than five pounds. I just threw 52 ounces in there. Uh, and here goes four ounces of sugar, a quarter cup, a.k.a. 113 grams. Now we're going to come out with the yeast. I'm doing a tablespoon and a half of yeast right here. But anyway, like I said, I saw this dude doing this on the internet. He threw in the five-pound bag of flour, but he was only using like a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of yeast, and maybe a tablespoon of oil. And I was like, wait a minute, that ain't right. So here I uh, I'd, uh, messed with the formulations. So this is now... I'm doing about two tablespoons of uh, this. I'm using fine Italian sea salt right there. Any paisans out there? And that's two teaspoons of salt or 34 grams. Coming in with my measuring cup, two tablespoons of oil or 28 grams. And this is ridiculous. Five pounds of flour, all purpose flour. I thought, I got a six-quart KitchenAid uh, stand mixer. This is going to be all right. And uh, should I foreshadow what happens? You probably know already. But anyway, I get, a, I get one of my bamboo spoons. Yeah, not wooden spoons. They're not going to break. My Italian mother used to b bust some wooden spoons across our behinds. And she would break them as we got older. Anyway, I'm stirring up uh, everything in the liquid mixture. And here, I, I still, like, visually, I was like, okay, this is not going to be a problem. This is not going to be a problem whatsoever. That's a six-quart bowl. I got five pounds of flour. It can handle it. Look at all, well, I was going to say look at all that head space, so that head rim up there, right? Where... Let me get something out here. Let me get that spoon back. Let me try to work that flour in, get it hydrated a little bit, right? Make, you know, create some more room for the rest of that flour. And it's like, I don't know if it was at this point I felt like I was in trouble. Look at that. I got like nowhere to move with this thing. Oh my. So, I'm trying to do this quick in my head. So 52 ounces, about three of water would be about three and a half pounds. I got five pounds of uh, five pounds of all-purpose flour. So we're looking at eight and a half pounds just in those two ingredients. So maybe eight and three quarter pounds. Here we go, off to the mixer. All right, let's see what let's see what we could do. I'm trying to remember. I shot this video a while ago. I'm trying to remember how nervous I was. Now I want you look at the lower edge of the the screen. Watch when I turn this on. I mean, we're, I'm going slow. See, boom! It's coming over the top. Use my hand as a shield. Try not to lose any more. And I'm like, okay, this. This is not going to work. So now get my trusty spoon. Come on. Try to coax all that flour down. Because even though I stirred it up, there's still a lot of dry flour sitting there on the top. You know, it's it's not well hydrated at this point. There's, uh, you can see even some more flour came out. Now I'm getting nervous. Here we go. Round and round she goes, where she stops, nobody knows. And you know, I like to mix my dough on, uh, 
Oh, I didn't even realize. I didn't even realize I haven't even pulled it up yet. You see how much more flour came out? Oh my, this is hilarious. This is hilarious as I'm reliving this experience. I'm, I'm thinking, I want to do this. Why? Uh, it just seemed like a neat thing to do. Five pound bag of flour, easy peasy. Yeah, not so easy. So here I go. So this is going to be for a while. I'm not even pulling this thing up. So this is like, this is, uh, the bowl is down as low as it can go. I'm going to put my little hand in there, try to push it down, get it all worked in, get it incorporated, get that flour hydrated. You can still see a little bit of dry dough, uh, dry dough, dry flour. I always call flour dough. I don't know why. But anyway, starting to get a little bit of action. Now, this KitchenAid has to be at least 25 years old. It is tough, you know. I, I want to replace, like, the hook, the batter, and the whip, but I never do it. It's, this has just been a solid workhorse. I think uh, I just we just got our my mom, like, a five-and-a-half-quart stand KitchenAid stand mixer I think it was about four hundred and fifty dollars and this is a six quart I bought it like hundred and seventy nine dollars but it's just such a good uh, good piece of equipment if you're going to use it and it really came in handy when I started my pizza blog playing with pizza dot com and my uh, YouTube channel playing with pizza youtube dot com slash at Playing with pizza, no spaces, all lowercase. So here it's starting to work in a little bit. I'm feeling a little bit confident. Maybe this thing is going to work. But as you look at it, you st you can still see you know some dry bits of flour. So it's not the the water is not entirely incorporated. You know, so not all the flour is, is hydrated at this point. And, you know, as John Kirkwood would tell you, don't waste anything. All that, all that dough stuck to my fingers coming off and going in. I'm going to shut it off here. And it's, oh, now we're going up to speed two. See if that's doing any better. And you can, if you can see down at the bottom of the bowl, it's just not getting worked very well. I give it a little shot, you know, trying to mix things up. So now I'm probably up to three or four at this point on the speed level. Finally, it's starting to show signs of coming together. Um, so put look, see how far it, up it is on that dough hook, and I haven't even raised the bowl at this point. There we go. Now we're up, and let's see what happens now. Yeah, like. I'm waiting <laughs> in total surprise, just like you, because I sh I shot this I don't know four or six weeks ago, and I ended up doing a a series about chasing Lou. It's about my attempt to replicate Lou Malnati's uh, iconic deep dish pizza. I'll leave a link for you, and I I hope you'll take time to watch it. A friend of mine, Jan, really loves. Uh, Lou Malnati's deep dish and I tried to replicate it for her and uh, me and my wife her and her husband Ron, my wife Wendy her husband Ron we made a, a big event out of it for us you know and so now you go in and uh, it's still it's still just not incorporating like I want it to and this is tough you know <laughs> I don't know why I did it, but you know what? I shot the video, and I'm not wasting the video. And I'm certainly not wasting my time, and I hope I'm not wasting your time either. Because, you know, sometimes we can learn from our mistakes. And so here, uh, I th at this point, you know, I'm thinking, look, the dough's coming over the guard on the dough hook, and it's just not going to get any better. So with it not getting any better, I decided, all right, we're going to 
finish this uh, with some hand kneading. Uh, got my uh, bouncer flower. I really like bouncer flower. It's it's a good it's an enriched bromated flower, and I really like it. It's similar to all trumps, but I like it just a little bit better than all trumps. It doesn't seem to get as gassy and as airy as all trumps. And I got another flower I'm going to try out here shortly. Primo Gusto from Gordon Food Service. All right, look at this. Look at this ball of dough. I always got to remember, okay, make make sure the camera can see what I'm doing. So I got to switch. I'm not left-handed, so I'm trying to get all this out with my left hand. And the dough, like right now, it just doesn't feel good. Um, you know, when you work with dough a lot, you know uh, what's what feels good and what doesn't. And right now, this just doesn't feel good. So look at this. Look at this behemoth on my small counter. The dough is almost bigger than my counter. We got a small place. And I got, I don't know, maybe six to eight square feet of uh, counter space. And I figured I'm going to work this a little bit. Now, what happens is like when you get that dough on the counter, and some people tell you not to use the extra dough. I'm, I see there I go calling flour dough again. Not to use the extra flour. But like I do, and when you do that, now the dough seems dry, right? But then you start working it, and that flour gets incorporated into your dough, and then it gets wet. So... Here I am trying to get all that dough off my fingers. And uh, so now, because now it's getting wet, I'm going to try to do kind of the uh, kind of the slap and fold method where you're supposed to stretch out the dough at the top, pull it out while you're slapping it down and folding it over. And it's just, it's just tough. You see how it's, now if you look at the counter, it's starting to stick more. And I was look, it was sticking to my hands. And at this point, you know, I'm like feeling a little bit defeated. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to let this bad boy rise and we'll see what happens. Again, with the extra flour. Um, you know, like I don't want it to be sticky. I want to be able to work with it. But uh, unless you're in a commercial kitchen... <laughs> with a gigantic mixer and you're doing like 50 pound bags of flour at a time yeah i'm not recommending uh to try this five pound pizza dough uh thing so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna divide it up i'm gonna make some rolls i'm gonna make some bread i'm gonna make some pizza out of this and so uh Get my trusty scale out. Get my dough cutter. And I like around 20, 22 ounces to do bread loaves. Um, and I just kind of roll them out flat uh, to a rectangle. Then I, then I roll it up into, you know, a log, so to speak, and put it in a, a bread pan. So I like to do 20, 22 ounces, maybe sometimes 24 ounces for a loaf of what I'll call a sandwich bread. Um, pizza, I've been doing uh, around 12 ounces, but if you want to do a New York pizza, I'm starting to do uh, 16 ounce dough balls for a New York pizza. It's a little bit easier for me to stretch it and get it thinner using more dough and you can see the that dough is sticky at this point so now so I'm going to start getting some bowls um, and containers to let these things sit and rise. So here we go. Put
putting in. I'm gonna that's gonna become a pizza right there. I should say pizza or a loaf of bread. I like to use a non-stick spray. Just look at that, it's just stick in. Uh that's gonna become, like I said, either pizza or a loaf of bread. Back to working, <laughs> back to working this dough. And at this point, I just want it to rise a little bit or just rest a little bit. Let the gluten start developing so it gets a little bit stronger and perhaps easier to work with. So I'm going to cover it up let it rise and I'll go back to work with this dough a little bit later on so here I'm putting some towels over the top uh, as you know Plastic wrap gives me fits. So probably what I should have done was gotten the tea towels damp and put them on and let them rest on the dough so it helped the dough stay a little bit wetter. And that's it. The dough is covered up and we'll be back shortly. All right. <laughs> if you could see the uh, that one right there, look at that. Whew, that is puffing up, so I think it's been at least a couple hours or so. There we go. Dough is not looking too bad, but it just, I didn't work it like it needed to be worked. And the dough is not as good as it could be. All right, so I'm going to tackle the. I think I'm going to do some uh, stretch and folds here. Again, just a technique to develop. Well, maybe not. Stretch and fold is a technique to develop the gluten where you stretch the dough and fold it over on itself. Here, that uh, slap and fold again. Uh, all right. So, this is almost how I would do a loaf of bread. But I'm just going to put this in a gigantic container. And I'm going to just let it sit in the fridge and just kind of let it develop, let it rise. But one of the issues was that um, in my fridge, it got a little cold. So, I mean, the dough still rose because there, there's a good amount of yeast in there. But uh, like the dough is getting almost a little bit frozen. All right, let's see what I'm doing with this bad boy. All right, so here's my bread technique. I fold it up, fold it into a rectangle, fold it over, flatten it. And then I'm just going to roll it up. This is going to become a sandwich loaf. And you want to try to get that seal, you know, nice and closed on the bottom. And so, again, that's probably around 22, 24 ounces of dough. That's going to go in a bread pan. It's going to rise for a little bit. Right now, I'm uh, preheating the oven so that uh, it will, so if I remember correctly, it's like, 464 degrees and I'm going to do that for about 20-25 minutes so the bread is going to rise and now this uh, this must be the rolls if I remember correctly I think I'm going to do about is it 8 3 ounce rolls so that would have been 24 ounces right there you know, sometimes I see people just, you know, cut eight pieces and that's what they're going with. And I think that's what I did here. You know, instead of measuring it. And when you do it this way, you're going to get some that are, 
are a little bit uh, that'll have a little bit more weight than others and you know what that's all right it's no big deal so now each of these are going to be rolled into a ball I do this a couple different ways I kind of squeeze it and form it into a ball and then I ride it kind of loosely in my hand uh, this one I'm going to fold over into itself and then I'm going to uh, roll it and when you see me go forward straight forward or straight backwards I'm trying to tuck and seal the bottom of it something I learned from my friend Freddie at Valley Steakhouse when he was teaching me how to roll out rolls man Freddie was an incredible baker you see how fast he used to make rolls and he, he would do his rolls two at a time so I'm I don't have a, a lot of control with my left hand, so sometimes you'll see me uh, use both hands, but, but most of the time it's just one. And I'm not doing as many rolls as Freddie used to do. I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of rolls he did a day, but it was a lot. First he'd have to get the lunch rolls ready, and then he'd have to get the dinner rolls ready. He was a machine. Anyway, here's six... And these I ended up using uh, as uh, hamburger buns. So I only did about three ounces each. You know, because I'm thinking, you know, when you go out and buy bread, you're getting like there's eight to a pound. But this is, you know, so I don't want to use a lot of dough. But uh, these didn't rise as much as I would have hoped. And they, you know, some of them were a little bit smaller. So I used them for sandwiches and not necessarily burgers, you know, the smaller ones. Hit my little, that's probably like a quarter sheet pan. And uh, so when I make hamburger rolls, you know, I, I press them down flat. But you see how much bounce it has. So <laughs> I don't know how successful that is. And look at look at some of them are not round anymore. Got a little oblong shape there down in the back corner. So here I put a little smaller one in the center. Trying to flatten them again. Almost like I'm playing whack-a-mole or something. But we're going to let those rest so we'll have some bread and rolls to bake. And this, what am I going to do with this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know i got to make me a pizza, right? i got to make me a pizza. I'm going to cut off about 16 ounces there. And that's going to be the pizza. The rest is going to go in the fridge and do a cold ferment earlier on the counter that was considered a bulk ferment where you get your whole batch of dough and let it ferment and here we go I'm just shaping up this dough ball and that's gonna be some pizza so we got pizza bread and rolls and a lot more flour and I still haven't used all that flour up. I threw like the last 20 ounces in the freezer because I just wasn't going to get it in. Now, I only have these square containers right here. But if you're doing a round pizza, it's good to have a round vessel in which to put it in. Hitting that with some nonstick spray. I'm going to let that rise for an hour or so. You remember, it's already been like two or four hours on the counter. All right, the moment of truth here I am. I'm using the oil method to stretch the dough. Put about a teaspoon or a cap full of uh, oil on the counter. And you do this instead of uh, flour. And it's supposed to be an easier way of uh, stretching your dough. So the moment of truth. Here it comes. So you notice I flipped that over. So what was the top in the container is now the bottom. I'm going to stretch it out, trying to keep uh, the, what do we call the cornicione, trying to keep a little bit there. 
I don't know how successful I am. Doing a little hand stretching back. I think I got a little hole in the dough there. Did a little hand stretching in the air. Now just stretching on the on the counter, sometimes called the bench or the board. And I'm just trying to get it to go. Now remember, I got that oil on the bottom, so I always got to remember to try to keep that side on the bottom. Here, uh, you can't see it, but I'm trying to, I threw it just a little bit. Um, I'm amazed that, you know, these pizziolas that just get that thing so thin. Look, it, I got some holes. I got a patch. That's not good. That's frustrating me there. And so, like with, you know, New York style is my favorite pizza. That's what I always try to make and do. But it's like, you see how thin that dough looks right there, right? But when that thing cooks up, it just rises and it's not thin. And you'll notice, like in the comments on like my New York style pizza videos, that you know people say, "Hey, that that's a little too thick." And like, yeah, I realize it. I'm trying to get better with stretching, but you know. <laughs> I do this for fun. Normally I don't use a prepared sauce, but I've been trying a bunch of different ones, different tomato products. This right here is Stanislaus fully prepared uh, pizza sauce. It's not bad. I don't like prepared sauces or jarred sauces that you buy at the grocery store because, I mean, t to me it tastes like glue or it tastes like paste. I should say it has the texture of that. And the Stanislaw products are, you know, you find them in like Restaurant Depot, Gordon Food Supply, you know, and uh, food service companies. And um, so I, I really like Stanislaw products. Everything I've tried has been really good from their uh, full red marinara sauce. Uh, here I am. I use sliced um, cheese on my pizzas, and here I'm using provolone today. You, normally I'll use uh, mozzarella. Sometimes I'll use provolone like they do at La Rosa's in Cincinnati. And my wife likes uh, toppings on her pizza. I just like cheese. So the... The pepperoni and the cheese, you know, I get at an Amish bulk food store, East Union bulk food store. And here I am going to put on some pepperoni on her half. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Get off my side of the pizza. Yeah, I'm like that old man. Get off my lawn, but get off my cheese pizza. There we go. Let's get it on her side keep my side clean so we're gonna cook a half pizza I mean half pepperoni half cheese pizza see you soon all right let's see how this is doing let's see how this is doing so it was cooked in a preheated oven that was preheated to 550 degrees I uh, use a pizza steel doesn't look too bad not bad at all but how does it taste? All right, so I made this dough five pounds of flour in a six quart bowl of my KitchenAid. Wasn't pretty. But let's see how it tastes. Pretty good. That's pretty good. One bite, everyone knows the rules. And I used this dough the same day. Made it about 8.30 this morning. It is now 
almost 5 p.m. So it's been rising a lot, but got some more in the fridge. We'll see how it tastes down the road, but not too bad. I wish we had a little more salt, but pretty good. All right, here's the bread and the rolls. The bread stayed in just a little bit too long. The rolls turned out pretty nice. But as my grandmother Bonda Dollar say, mind ya, Bobby, mind ya. Ciao.